when I say they are in it for the long haul, from the start to the finish, they're making sure you're going somewhere and you're gonna do something. So I have to give my, you know, my props to the <laughs> advising people because they wouldn't let up. I didn't really know much about downtown because when I was growing up in Indianapolis, you didn't really go downtown very often. I go over to Lynn House's house almost every day after school and something like, I never drink out of mason jars, ever. And I've noticed like so many people drink out of mason jars here. And I don't know why, but I just think that's so cool. And like, um, people around here just seem more appreciative of like the little things. They were in it, in it to win it. Emailing my mom like 400 times a month to make sure I had my stuff together. But in the end, I'm going to college on a full ride, so hooray. <laughs> I, I didn't really know that communities in the downtown area offered as much as they offered. I didn't go to the art showings or gallery openings or any of the restaurants or, or you know, concerts that were downtown that often. Um, and so when I moved here, or when I, when I started working here, I decided that I really wanted to be near downtown. Like our school has a compost. Like, <laughs> yeah. Who, or like riding bikes. Like yeah. Riding bikes. Like, <laughs> Who rides bikes? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, every, um, yeah, I, don't, I guess it's just shaped me more of a person and just being open-minded, I guess. That's, yeah. The school changed my life because when I came from a middle school where everyone was very mean, everyone was always, you know, tearing you down. And so I kind of carried that over in my freshman year. And I was very mean to everyone. I said a whole lot of terrible stuff. I was very, very, you know, <sighs> so <laughs> over the years, you know, even though I was very upset and very mean, the people kept consistently being nice and let me know it was okay for me to be myself. So like towards the end, my junior and senior year, I really started, you know, being happy and and realizing that everyone's out to get you. And so that was, that's one thing that was the biggest thing that changed my life was the fact that everyone here has a heart and it allowed me to have a heart. Like I'm, Drop everything, I'm there if you need me, no problem. This is the best way to put it. I was really sad, but as I, when I was at home, but when I, the closer I got to school, the more happy I got because I remember like seeing, like for instance, Berkeley's smile or like Jenny's laugh or like my friends just clowning in the lunchroom. And the closer I got to the school, the happier I got because I knew that their happiness would make in return make me happy and you know you know this happy whatever it it's, it's true I now have respect yeah. like I have a respect that I'll never lose for Heron in my high school experience mm -hmm. because of what I saw and what I experienced and like she said not everyone experiences that I've, I've grown so much just like being in this community I've like I mean, even though like where I live, it's still like a big area and pretty diverse and stuff, but like out here in downtown and just like around here and I've seen things that have like, I don't know, like opened my eyes and helped me become more open-minded and just, um... Give, yeah, I, got, I got some street cred now, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I remember every morning, because we used to carpool together, every morning we'd, <laughs> it would be the best experience Yeah. driving to school because just some of the stuff we, mm -hmm. we saw, like... We weren't used to we it. We weren't used yeah. to it. I've become so much more appreciative of the city of Indianapolis and just like, just the community. I mean, even like as soon as I came to Heron, 
I noticed like, oh, all these people know each other in this neighborhood. And at first I was like, this is weird. Like all these people, <laughs> like what the heck? All this stuff. And so, but now it's, it's like, we're not just Heron. We're one big neighborhood. We're just yeah. one big, huge community. Experiencing Heron has shown me that actually there are a lot of there are a lot of families that do live downtown and are are really kind of trying to make downtown a family friendly environment, a place where families can find education, can find communities, and be located in places where um, they have a sense of a sense of place, and it's not just anywhere. And I think growing up on the north side of Indianapolis, I felt like I could have lived, I could have been born anywhere, right? So to me, like the 86th Street Corridor could be anywhere in the United States and no one would ever know. If you took a picture of 86th Street just down the line, no one would know where in the United States you'd actually taken that picture. And what I think is beautiful about downtown is that's not true. If I take a picture out here and show it to someone who's from Indianapolis or, or whatever, they would know that that is, that is this location, that is you know 16th and Talbot which is just looks different than the rest of the city and, and looks different than the rest of the country. And the where my neighborhood is a complete 180 from this neighborhood. And so to go back and forth between the two is really nice because I see it's broadened my horizon. Like first Friday or, you know, that troll that they made out of snow, like it it completely was different. It's a completely different air. It's like another planet, and it's only 15 minutes away from my home. I'm a firm believer in your surrounding has an effect on you, and this area has had, had a pretty good effect on me. I like it. When Jake died, immediately he didn't die. He was in the hospital for about three days, um, and he was brain dead. It was really hard for me to come back to school at first. Eventually I did, um, and a lot of that time was spent in Mr. Kazai's office, Mr. Price's office, Ms. House's office, talking to people because it was just really hard to go to class. And the fact that they allowed that for me and allowed um, me to grieve in the way I needed to, like, I wouldn't have received that anywhere else. So they sat, every administrator sat, like, down at a, um, in the library. They all sat down, and we had a meeting with me and my parents. And they were like, what can we do? And like the fact that they noticed that I was struggling so much with my grief and that they, they noticed that I was having a hard, really hard time, they kind of rearranged my schedule. So I was still at school, because at first they were like, let's just make you homebound. And I was like, no, I want to be at school. I want to be around these people. It, it made me, even though I was really sad, it made me, it was OK to be sad right then. And that like helped a lot. It's just crazy how much support, like Tom Day, like um, he didn't even know my brother at all, which is why this is so nice. He painted this beautiful portrait of my brother and then Isabella of Howe and Kennedy Connor like cut out these little cardboard pieces and handed out to people who like knew Jake, knew me, or just kind of felt connected to the whole thing. That would have never happened at any other school. Where I came from, everything was very controversial. You cannot talk about some certain things. You cannot be open to express some of your opinions. The level of being insecure about your opinions just, it wasn't good. And here, I feel so much entitled to my opinions and free to share what I believe and free to accept what other people believe. It's just. It's so much more free. I know, like, I probably would have had a lot harder time and struggled a lot more if I was at any other school. And I'm so glad I had hair, and, like, it's such a... It, I can't even explain what it feels like to go to high school where, one, when you're a teenager, you already feel like no one probably cares about you in a sense. Everyone's kind of felt like that. And to have that constant reminder every day at school is more than... I could ever ask for beyond just the great education I receive, the um, how they push me to be ambitious and like they push me to do all these types of things, but they care and that's like one of the biggest things. I, I wouldn't want any other way. I, I couldn't imagine me going somewhere else because more than likely 
I'd be literally depressed or upset. Just still mad at the world. But here, I'm not mad anymore. I'm not. I want people to believe that they can get a great education, they can, they can raise their kids downtown or near downtown, and, uh, and their kids will be safe, and they'll be prosperous, and they'll be culturally enriched from it. I can honestly say like, I'm really blessed, and I think any other student here that's really close with someone can say that too. Because um, it really does, it really does change your life for the better. I want to help kids learn about life and not just learn about social studies. and so. I see my role as an administrator in many ways of just continuing the work of teaching. There's no, you can't, you can't put it into words. You really can't. The school leaves me speechless every day. That's it.